Before you begin using Spur PSA, please be sure to review the product's safety data sheet. Remember to work in a well-ventilated area and follow all appropriate safety protocols. You will need a clean working space, I will use a paper drop cloth, a roller, brush, or other suitable coating tool, a cloth or towel to clean the substrates you will bond, a cup or container, a stick to mix, spur adhesive, the substrate you will coat spur onto, in this case I will bond to some aluminum, a silicone release liner if you will be applying spur at a later time, the substrate you will eventually bond to, one example being glass cloth, and in this case I will use a timer and an appropriate solvent for thinning the spur. To begin, clean and dry all surfaces to be bonded. A lint-free towel and an appropriate solvent can be used to remove all grease, oil, and debris. Surfaces should be wiped dry before applying the adhesive. Set up your clean working space. Pour the spur into a cup or container. Thinning, if required, may be done using ethyl acetate, beetle acetate, MEK, MIBK, or other compatible solvents. With the solvent in the spur, mix thoroughly. You may have noticed I also had to change the drop cloth. It's always a good idea to keep some extra pieces on hand in case you spill. Spur may be applied by brushing, wiping, rolling, or dipping. A thin, uniform coating usually provides the strongest bond. I went ahead and made samples using a roller and a brush. If using a roller, pour the spur and solvent mixture into the tray. Not pictured, but since spur has a polyurethane backbone and PU's like moisture, it might not be a bad idea to lightly mist the adhesive with some water from a spray bottle to help facilitate cure. Now I will show the brush demonstration. Using a brush allowed me to get a thicker coating on the substrate, but the coating may not be as uniform as the roller. Whether you use a roller or a brush, before assembling the pieces, you must allow for the solvent in the adhesive to evaporate. This is known as drying time. The length of drying time will depend on the thinner used, adhesive thickness, and temperature. A good starting point is 20 minutes. A heat gun could also be used to speed up drying time. I found that both methods coated the aluminum very well, but the final coating wouldn't be adequate for an optically clear application but would be great for, say, an industrial application. If looking for a more optically clear solution, I recommend using a drawdown bar or making spur into a transfer film. In another video, I use spur in a transfer film format to demonstrate the resistance to fuel, water, and solvent. If the solvent is evaporated from the adhesive and you'll be bonding the substrates immediately, firmly press them together. In this video, I will be applying a silicone release liner to the spur. That way, I can apply the substrate at a later date. Place the silicone release liner over the PSA and apply even pressure. Make sure the siliconized side of the release liner is facing the adhesive. Please note, if trying to apply a contact adhesive to a silicone substrate, Momenta recommends using PSA 529, which is a silicone adhesive. It is suggested that PSA 529 is used with a fluorinated silicone release liner. See our video on how to apply instructions for that product. With my release liners on the sample parts, I will wait a few days and come back and check on them. Please note that spur has a post cure after the solvent is evaporated. Proper cross-linking needs to occur for the product to show resistance to fuel, solvent, water, and other stresses. Allow several days for the product to build adhesion before testing. When ready for final assembly, simply peel off the release liner and apply it with even pressure. 
This concludes the how to use video for using spur with a roller or brush. To see the spur in transfer film format and its resistance to fuel, solvent and water, please see our other video. Thanks for watching.